Hey, welcome to Store Brand Comics. I'm Tio, and this is the video where I talk about comic books um, that you may or may not have heard of and may or may not want to read. So, um, this is going to be the first video going up on this channel. So, yeah, let's just jump right into it. Um, so, the book that I want to talk about today is called God Country. Hold up a little bit longer for you. God Country. Um, and it is written by Donnie Cates, illustrated by Jeff Shaw, with colors by Jason Wordy, and letters by John J. Hill. So, um, God Country is a, uh, just like a very high quality, um, I guess, piece of art, uh, from the comic book publisher Image, which, um, if you don't know who Image is, they are an independent comic book publisher separate from DC or Marvel. Um, they publish almost exclusively uh, creator-owned content. Um, not not all creator-owned content. Just uh, that's just what most of their catalog is made up of. And so God Country, uh, it's it qualifies as one of those. And you can tell too from the quality and the storytelling here that you, this is. Um, not just like a product that um, is kind of being endlessly pumped out like most superhero comics are uh, as much as it pains me to admit that um, but yeah like this was definitely a very personal story that um, just happened to be interesting enough to publish and sell uh, so you may be wondering well with a title like God Country what is the story about well, let me read the back of the book to tell you. Um, its genre is described as epic Texan battle fantasy. Um, and the synopsis reads, A long time ago, out in West Texas, an old man named Emmett Quinlan was dying from Alzheimer's. His son Roy was stuck between being a father to his own daughter and watching his father fade away into a hateful old monster. And to make matters worse... A giant tornado was on its way to destroy everything the Quinlan family held dear. It was in the wake of this storm, however, that everything would change, for the tornado did not come from this world, and it brought something along with it. From the ashes of his home, Emmett Quinlan stood holding an enchanted, indestructible, 12-foot talking sword named Valofax, and as long as he was holding on to it, he was back. His Alzheimer's was cured, he knew his own name again, and the faces of the people he loved most. Problem is, folks, that sword didn't really belong to Emmett, and its true owners will stop at nothing to see it returned. So that's one heck of a setup there. Um, so the story is about, as the synopsis says, an old man named Emmett with Alzheimer's, um, and he's you know slowly losing his his sense of who he is. He's losing himself to his own mind. Um, and then out of nowhere he just gets this magic sword that gives him his mind back um, and uh, he makes it very clear that he will do anything to hold on to that to never lose himself again um, it is a very human way of you know telling a story like this um, obviously I feel like it's a universal human fear to you know, be trapped inside your own body and kind of lose who you are um, to you know your own deterioration um, and you know just being able to hold on to yourself until the very end is just kind of a universal human desire um, and it just happens to present this very human story with this very comic booky uh, setup of these cosmic gods um, coming to Earth to take their magic sword back. So I want to talk about the designs of these gods um, for a bit because I find uh, the way they look to be very interesting. They are very clearly heavily influenced by the art of a legendary comic book artist named Jack Kirby. Now I'm I uh, have started this YouTube channel specifically to talk to 
people who aren't very familiar with comic books and maybe want to get into comic books. So I'm just going to assume that um, if you are one of those people, you don't know who Jack Kirby is. Jack Kirby um, is a legendary comic book artist um, and writer who uh, co-created a huge number of Marvel's characters um, in their catalog alongside Stan Lee. The characters that he co-created with Stan Lee include the Fantastic Four, uh, the Hulk, Thor, the Inhumans, Black Panther, um, the X-Men, and I think that's most of it. Um, he also co-created Captain America with uh, another writer named Joe Simon. Um, and then he eventually left Marvel uh, and went to DC and created a set of characters called the New Gods for them. That includes characters like Darkseid, Mr. Miracle, Big Barda, you know, and a bunch of other characters with weird names. Um, and then he ended up leaving DC and going back to Marvel and creating a group of characters called the Eternals, and who are getting a movie soon, actually. Um, so yeah, Jack Kirby had quite the uh, quite the career creating ridiculous comic book characters. Um, and that's not to say that they weren't awesome comic book characters, because they are. When I say they're ridiculous, I mean they're ridiculous in a good way. Um, but yeah, so some of the stuff that he tended to uh, draw the most and write about the most were um, these sort of like modern myth cosmic gods. And um, that's that's like a lot of his characters fell in line with like the Silver Surfer or Galactus or those you know sorts of figures like these larger than life cosmic entities with unimaginable power um, and they all had like a very similar design sensibility of like the men would usually have very like sort of square faces um, if they wore a helmet then it would usually be a very large helmet with a lot of prongs and horns sticking off of it um, that's likely why uh, when you watch the Marvel movies and you see like Odin with his in the first Thor movie with his giant helmet and like it has these like kind of horns coming off of it and Loki is wearing a, a helmet with like those horns sticking off the front there's a very Jack Kirby sort of design for a character to have he really liked horned helmets and that sort of uh, design sensibility is definitely uh, carried over into God Country and was very clearly a huge inspiration on uh, the way that these god characters looked. Um, one of the things I love most about this comic book is that it's a very non-comic booky sort of story with a very sort of almost terrifyingly adult theme to it, um, applied to just one of the most larger than life ridiculous comic book concepts ever imagined um and uh, i think it works really well it's the sort of story that really uh, for the most part could only be told with comic books and it uses um you know one of the great legacies of comic book art to visually display uh its story and speaking of its story and its themes, I want to discuss those for a bit. As the synopsis points out, the main character suffers from Alzheimer's. Um, so the idea of the story very much focuses on, um, or rather the themes of the story very much focus on the ideas of like identity and loss and old age and um, basically, you know, kind of living life with one foot in the grave already. Um, and that letting go can be very difficult, um, especially when you get to that age where memories are all you got left, and even those are starting to kind of slip through your fingers. It's, as I said before, a, a terrifyingly adult 
theme for a comic book story. Um, there are plenty of comic books that I see with, uh, you know, mature rating on the back of them, especially from Image. Um, and then you read the book, and it's like, it's not necessarily that the book is mature, per se, or particularly adult. It's just that it's very violent, sexual, vulgar, or some mixture of the three. Whereas in God Country's case, I would say that um, it's not terribly vulgar. Um, there are a couple of, you know, F-bombs here and there. Like, it's, it's not afraid to use strong language. Um, there is no sexuality whatsoever displayed in this book. Um, and uh, as far as the violence goes, um, I wouldn't say this is even remotely close to the most violent comic book I've ever read. Um, so, you know, you might be wondering, where does the M for mature rating come from? I would say the maturity in this book's rating comes from its you know, major themes of, you know, loss and letting go. Um, this is the rare mature comic that I would actually say is mature. Um, it's a fantastic work of literature, uh, and it's absolutely worth your time to read. It doesn't take very long to read it at all. Every time I've read it, I've read it in one go. Um, it's a very gripping story. It kind of grabs you right away and um, just kind of doesn't let you go until it's all finished. And I will be honest, without spoiling anything, um, I do tear up just about every time I read this book. It's a very emotionally moving story for me. Um, so yeah, and I would actually rate this as one of my favorite comic book stories of all time. Um, it's a self-contained story. It has a beginning, a middle, and an end. Um, and the ending makes it very clear there's no chance of continuation or sequel of any kind. Um, it is just a one and done, which is why I wanted to talk about it as my first um, comic book to discuss on this channel. Uh, this is a bit of a shorter discussion to start off with. These videos may be longer or maybe shorter in the future, depending on um, how much I have to say about each individual book that I want to discuss. Um, but yeah, so that's God Country. Written by Donnie Cates, illustrated by Jeff Shaw, colored by Jason Wordy, with litters by John J. Hill. And if you get the collected edition of it. Um, it's got a series of variant covers in the back uh, by Gerardo Zaffino. Um, and if you don't know what a variant cover is, which I'm assuming you don't if you're uh, you know new to comics, a variant cover is like a, an alternate um, cover to like an individual issue of um, a comic book that you would see on the stands at, you know, your local comic shop or whatever. Um, it's just kind of like a special sort of, like, um, I think they do it for, like, when a book hits, like, a second printing or something. Like, you know, you, you know this, this book sold out the first time and we had to print more of it, so here's a special uh, cover for all the new printings of this issue. So, um... Yeah, uh, if you're into looking at just a little bit of extra artwork at the back of the book, that's available in the uh, collected form. There's also a, a few little behind the scenes things at the back of the book. Uh, most uh, collected editions for comic books um, come with some sort of behind the scenes thing or extra artwork or something at the back. So yes, I highly recommend God Country absolutely worth your time you can probably find it on amazon for a decent price um you might go looking at like a, a local bookstore or like a like a barnes and noble or a books a million depending on where you live um uh, or go to a comic book store if you have one near you they probably have a copy available um this was a bestseller apparently when it came out um and, you know, you can definitely see why. 
the collect edition comes with, uh, uh, you know, a whole heap of critical acclaim plastered all over the back of it. Um, and you will see a lot of comic books with, like, you know, uh, critical compliments um, on them, you know, obviously trying to sell them. But this is one of the comics that I would say is absolutely worthy of all of the positive uh, criticism it has received. Um, it's, I know I'm probably overhyping this a little bit, but it's mostly just because I love this book so much. It's as close to uh, perfect as I would say a story, especially one as short as this, could uh, really ever get. So, And you know, your tastes will vary. Um, I don't recommend it for, you know, children, especially particularly young kids. Um, it can be a very scary book. There is one sequence, I don't want to spoil too much, but there is one sequence where, um, like, an army of undead kind of rise up from the graves to attack our heroes. So there is that. Um, but yeah, as, as I said before, this, this book is, you will see on the back, it is, they rated it themselves as being a mature reader's book. Uh, I recommend following that rating. It is definitely a more adult comic. So, um, yeah. I guess that's all I have to say. God Country's good. Read it if you ha have the opportunity. Um, and if you want to start getting into comics, God Country is definitely a fantastic starting point. Now, it may have the unfortunate effect of um, making a other comics you may want to read look bad in comparison, but uh, it's best just not to compare other comics to this one, because this one's just in a different league, in my opinion. So yeah. I guess that's uh, the video. Uh, I plan on posting more to this channel uh, in the future, so if you want to see that, um, hit the subscribe button. Yes. and um, if you want to get notifications when I upload ring ring a ding ding the bell um, you can tell I've I've never done the like and subscribe spiel that you see so much on YouTube before until now uh, and I'm probably not going to do it a lot I don't I don't like feeling like I'm you know trying to trying to shill if, if you won't want to um, you know if you've probably been on YouTube long enough you know if you want to subscribe you'll subscribe you know so all right cool beans